Hi, I'm Darlene Hansen, and I'm a speech and language pathologist here in California. My focus is augmentative communication, and I spend most of my time working with individuals um, with autism who are in either don't have speech or have limited use of their speech, uh, and teaching uh, them and their families how to build communication through some alternate mode. So, I today I wanted to talk about how, how do we do that? So many times, so often, people are learning AAC um, when in, in an isolation, so as in an activity. So maybe they're just learning vocabulary, so they're learning what different pictures mean, or um, maybe sometimes even concepts, but they're kind of artificial, like maybe they're teaching more, and we're teaching it by creating a scenario where the person has to keep asking for more. Um, it's, it's a real activity, but it's not a natural activity. Um, and, and so then people come to me oftentimes saying, well, my son or daughter knows a lot of vocabulary on their devices, but they don't use them to communicate because communication is different than, it is just, is the bigger picture of what you do with your vocabulary, right? But if we don't teach it communicatively, it just gets learned as vocabulary. So I'm reminding all of us that everyone learns communication and language in a natural context. So there's communication going on all throughout your day. It's uh, in your homes, it's in your schools, it's in sibling interactions, it's at the doctor's office, it's at the grocery store. There's always opportunities for communication. And that's how we all learn communication. We learn it by um, hearing it, having a symbol, and for speaking people, it's the word, right? Um, for hearing impaired people, it might be the sign. Um, and for an AAC user, it would be the symbol. Or the for a literacy-based person, it would be the letters to make the word. So we, we attach the symbol during the event and during that natural context. And, and that's how AAC users can learn to use language as well and use communication systems. So, so what do you do? You look at your experiences in your day and you look at when are every, when's everyone else talking? If there's siblings in the home or for sure, you know, classroom teachers, um, what are they saying? You know, if you're in a classroom and the um, phrase for the social phrase for the day is, hey dude, then you should have hey dude on that communication device, okay? Um, you should have the other vocabulary as well, but you want to have the things and the, the opportunities that are happening all around him. If he hears somebody saying, hey dude, and he wants to say, hey dude as well, he needs an option to say that. Um, if he says that, if he gets those options, he gets those opportunities, he's going to, or she, are, are going to be more um, excited and, and they're also going to make that connection that, oh, I'm engaging with people right now, okay? Not just when I want a cookie or when I need to go to the bathroom. Um, so look through school has plenty of opportunities, but your home does too. So look in your home situation, you know, maybe you're sitting down and as a family, your um, people are reading and maybe your person doesn't read with you yet, but they do look at the pictures. Um, just throw in some opportunities. You know, if you're looking at a picture book with your toddler or your young person, you use their device and you press the buttons as they're looking at the picture of the apple and of the boy and of the rabbit. Press the buttons, okay? So that he sees that, oh, that's a vocabulary word that's in my book. They'll start, then they can start using it. Just like if he was a speaking person, you would start saying, there's a rabbit, where's the apple? There's the boy. You can press it on their device. So you're creating opportunities for engagement, for communication, and for learning how to use the vocabulary, but use it communicatively, okay? Because you can start asking questions and then they can answer with the button system themselves. So you want to look for these opportunities in your family, all right? It's not just about personal wants and needs, but social opportunities as well. So think about that and um, maybe make a list if you have to, if you're that kind of a person that does better when I see it, pros and cons, however you want to talk about it. Um, make a list of what are some opportunities that people are talking and engaging with each other in our house that I would like for my son or daughter to also be engaging. And you'll start there. You'll start there. You'll start thinking about what does he need in order to participate there. Okay, and so I'm going to do some more of these little um, 
vignettes here uh, to elaborate on some other pieces of creating this natural language development, this natural communication environment. But I think I'm gonna stop there today with your assignment is to just look for communication opportunities that everyone else is having and start thinking about how your person needs to get involved in that and what would it take to get them involved in that. And then we'll start talking about what, how to build that out. Have a great one.